By the way, uh, Jace, apparently Andy Gorman's favourite band, The Steps. He tweeted me earlier. <laughs> Top three favourite bands. I Whoa. went for The Stones, The Beatles and Oasis, and he went for Steps. But did you see whose name was next to that tweet? Oh, Jason Trinder. Thank you very much. Yeah. There we go. Lovely. You're a Steps fan, you, Jace? Of course no, he is. No, I'm not. Andrew says... He doesn't like walking up steps. <laughs> says the guy who <laughs> lost two stone last week because he dropped his f***ing <laughs> kebab. <laughs> I was glad about that. I had to go and get another one. So apparently, lads, it's coming home. That's what uh, they're telling me. I don't think so. Beckham looked smart, didn't he, in his suit? What about, um, what about the ginger kid from uh, uh, Harry Potter ne- sat next to uh, David Beckham? <laughs> was that Ed Sheeran? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was great, he was in Harry Potter. <laughs> he was brilliant, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, come Let's on, Ed. Here we go. Here we go. Ready. Here's Jason Mohammed in that famous Cardiff City shirt. He'll be the one to take the free kick. Stands over the ball, 25 yards out. Bellamy to his right. Curls it. Oh my word, what a finish! A beauty from Mohammed. Keeper, absolutely no chance. So here we go at Craven Cottage, a cold and frosty New Year's Day, and it is Fulham who get us underway. And Hamill picks up the ball and shoots. What a goal! Past the Mansfield townkeeper Jason Trinder and into the top corner with only seven seconds on the clock. Trinder was still waving to the fans. That has to be a record. Fulham lead 1 0. Cardiff City on the attack down the right hand side here in Indian Park, heading towards the great jet. Talisman, Phil Stant has the ball, looking for Robbie James, passes it back, finds Robbie James. Now Robbie James is looking for somebody. He crosses it, he finds somebody. It's Andy Gorman, bullet header, back of the net. Andy Gorman scores for Cardiff City in front of the great jet, and they're bouncing around like Zebedee. Hello and welcome once again to a bit of Blue Euro Trash, the biggest and the best Euro 2020 podcast with me, Jason Trinder. Me, Andy Gorman. And me, Jason Mohammed. Yes, we have reached the quarterfinals. Who'd have believed it? And boys, before we go any further, want to say a big shout out to David Bright. Big fan of the show. He took a picture DB. and on Twitter he said, another drive in on match day, another chance to catch up with the boys from a bit of blue. Had a chat with Jason Mohammed last week about this episode. Boys, I'm loving it still. Cannot wait to hear what you got to say about last night's games and he means those wicked games Dave, right, yeah, DB. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Dave. Thank, thank you very much and he's going to give us some That's free it. tickets to the cricket I reckon yeah, yeah. I hope so well now Would we've you... read that out we need 2020 <laughs> tickets yeah, tomorrow definitely. please Dave are they, are, they, are they playing tomorrow <laughs> I think there are a couple of games I was at the Sri Lanka game last week and saw Dave had a little chat with him Boys, he told me he is absolutely loving the podcast brilliant well, there's not a lot of people that aren't so but so, and also this is going to be an exciting episode Coming up in today's show, we have our summary of all the last 16 games and the shocks and the observations of our two football experts, old Pep Guardiola wannabe here, Jason Mohammed, and old <laughs> Pepto-Bismol subscriber, <laughs> Andy Gorman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about the quarterfinals and our, and our poor predictions again, uh, live again on the show later on, and we've got competition winners and more giveaways to give away to you wonderful listeners. Brilliant. So... Um, yeah, a lively, a lively few days. Um, what have we been up to, gentlemen? What you've been doing? Who you've been with? <laughs> it sounds like Partridge. Uh, I know exactly. Every single week, exactly. he gets more like well, Partridge. To be fair, Jay, I can see you've had your haircut. I can't believe it. I know he's looking smart today. I have to say. Jesus, yeah, I tell to... you what's worrying though, right? And yeah. all. Euro Trash podcast. He's been giving it the big one. Yes. I'm Welsh, and I'm looking forward yep. to watching Wales get to the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. Now Wales are out and England are through, which we'll come on to. Yep. Have you noticed he's turned up tonight in a white T-shirt? He has indeed. White T-shirt, haircut. What is going on, Trinder? I don't know. I I've don't been, know. Well, been... well to, to be fair, talking about shout-outs, I thought I was going to ask um, what quick fit you had your hair, hair done in. <laughs> so uh, you give them a shout-out quick. <laughs> He a, does look sun-kissed, I have to say. Does, doesn't he? You're looking very uh, no. handsome, Jason I've Fairness. been to a wedding, so obviously I'm trying to look, you know, virginal in yeah. my wife. Okay. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, and, Showstopper. Uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been to Devon uh, for a couple of days to, yeah. a, to a lovely wedding, lovely right, venue. Yeah. And funnily enough... Actually, doesn't Partridge have a cottage in Cornwall? Yeah, he does. And you've been I to know. Devon. I know, exactly. And he drove uh, in it without any shoes at Dundee. Well, <laughs> Do you drive an Lexus, Chase? Do you drive an Lexus? Yeah. Lexus. <laughs> Lexus. <laughs> it's the Japanese Mercedes. Are you modelling uh... yourself on Partridge, Trinder? <laughs> now you've got some headphones, uh, you are Partridge. But well, he's got the same haircut now, anyway. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I actually had my second jab this week. Um, as well for, yeah. oh, well uh, for, for Covid I know yeah did they weird... use a harpoon to give that to you Andy <laughs> well weirdly weirdly I had it in, in the front of my leg 
What? Yeah, in the front of my legs. My, my thighs are killing me. <laughs> oh. oh, man. To, to, that's what? Got to, that can't stay in. That cannot it's, stay in. Of course it's got to. Well, oh. well, that's normal. People have two jabs, but uh, obviously, uh, Jason Mohamed, you had three. <laughs> Why? Right. Well, two from the NHS and one from the nine-year-old boxing, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did some sparring last night, actually, with Barry Francis, a cage fighter. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, Barry's from Ely. And he said to me... Barry well, no Francis? Point. Yeah. You had Bar- a fight? Barry right. TKO Francis. Wow. And be careful what you say, Trinder, because yeah. he lives in Ely. Well, to be honest, short hop Trevor Francis here. could give you a f***ing you know, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, shout out to Barry. Three rounds with him. I hit him with a couple of clean ones, but he hit me with about 25 clean shots as well. But is anyway. That, is that why you're a bit docile tonight? No, I'm very quiet tonight, absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll see. But I tell you what, though, boys, mm-hmm. this is a big episode tonight it because is. Andy Gorman on Twitter chatting to another one of our favoured A Bit of Boo listeners, Philip, said that he was raring to go tonight. So I cannot wait to hear what Andy Gorman has got to say. Apparently, he's going to get stuck in to the Wales Denmark game. Is this true? It is true. Lots of coming. Lots and lots. We'll look forward to that. And obviously, well, last 16 games, all done and dusted. Uh, Where do we start? I suppose we'll have to start with Wales. Yeah. Uh, Wales, disappointingly, uh, losing to Denmark 4 0. Uh, And it was disappointing, wasn't it? Yeah. I think you should just hand straight to Andy because I think this is what he's raring to go on. Andrew, please give us your synopsis of that game. Thanks, Netrash. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, basically, what I just want to say is the fact that if you've watched all those games, all those Come on, Jace, uh, we'll, round we'll, of 16 we'll go games, out now. Yeah, should we leave? Yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah, a curry yeah. from Come the on. Well, Let's go. go. We'll, yeah. uh, at least the ratings will go up. So, uh, <laughs> let's, let's call a spade a spade at the end of the day. They, Wales were appalling. Uh, and, I, and I've got to say it, their setup was wrong, the team was wrong. Uh, well, to be fair, they said it was all right for the first 20 minutes. But when Denmark changed and brought Christensen out into that midfield role to take, try and take Ramsey out of the game, we had they, they, we just didn't have a plan B. Where you know when that happens, you have to be you have to have that that strength and have to have that knowledge and have to have that coaching ability to actually pull players around. Now, whether that means bringing a player off and changing it and changing the formation or anything, but we just did not do anything. And I thought that was the most disappointing part of it all because, unfortunately, Robert Page isn't up to it. That's not his fault. You know, he, he was brought in when... He's going to get banished from ever commenting on the Wales team again for saying things like that, isn't he, Jason? Well, <laughs> what are you asking me? <laughs> if you say anything against the Wales team, they, they, want, they want nothing to do with you ever again, do they, Jace? Not <laughs> even a lot. They will allow you within 20 yards of a Welsh player. The man they couldn't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, again, just, just going back to that point is the fact that... Uh, oh, he's going back to it. Hang on a minute. No, Do you no, want no, a wine gum, Jason? <laughs> yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank the, you. Can I have a wine gum? Yeah, yeah. Go on, Andy. Sorry, on. No, we're, we're, we're listening to you. I'm not... <laughs> I'm enjoying this. All right. Listen, I, I'm, I'm Welsh through and through, and I always want Wales to move forward, but we just didn't have it. Mm. It wasn't there. Let's not take anything away from Denmark. We can go through all the excuses about travelling. We can go all through all the excuses about the referee, which we all know was bad and it was unfortunate. We had to do all that travelling and the referee was appalling. Yes, I get that. But it doesn't alter the fact that when an opposing team makes changes to nullify the, the first 20 minutes that we had, and let's be honest as well, Bale should have scored that, that goal when he went through. So that's 1-0, different game. OK, but when, as I said before, when the Danish manager changes it, their formation and then puts a player on Ramsey to take him out of the game, which is exactly what he did. Yeah. He's got to be able to change that. So when Christensen takes Ramsey out of the game, effectively, yeah. and he did, and he did a fantastic job on him, what do you want Robert Pace so, to do? So what happens then when um, a player gets brought out of one position to mm-hmm. then go and mark an, another player of our, on our team? So that player then will follow Ramsey as he did around and took him out of the game. So what we do is then we pull another player up and whether that's a substitution or whether that's a change in formation, you pull another player into the midfield to open, uh, well, to sit in that space where Ramby, Ramsey was and then, then make them make another decision, whether they bring someone out. Because him. also, so don't just... forget, you Denmark were playing with three at the back initially, right? With yeah. Christensen and then Kjar in the middle and then Vestergaard as well. So if Christensen is suddenly going after Ramsey... Doesn't that mean you've got an area to exploit there That's as well? That's exactly what it means, Jay. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Jay, the other point is the fact that I've been talking all along about um, the quality of the players that's in the starting lineup for us. And again, through no fault of his own, just because of the quality of um, of the, the division he'd been playing in, was morale. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned earlier to you, the fact that um, the first goal, if you really look at it uh, and analyse it, he gets drawn towards the ball when he shouldn't have done. And the player who's gone past him, his player who should be marking, 
has gone on and scored the goal. Absolute quality finish from where it was. You can't take anything away from the Danish player there. They were brilliant. Let's, they were let's fan- be honest they here They were as well. fantastic. Denmark they were, were terrific, they weren't they? were But again, going back to my other analogy, you, you, you can only beat what's in front of you. And Denmark mm-hmm. did that. And they... <laughs> and they I, had the I, grass and they didn't run in they didn't run into the grass did they, I, I pulled out some stats on Joe Morrell right yep. and five starts for Luton and I compared his stats to Hoiberg for example right who's been terrific for Spurs as well this season 70 touch touches for Hoiberg 54.4% side passes 29% forward compare that to Joe Morrell right 43 touches of the ball 70% side passes and 16% forward wow so that just sums it up, doesn't it? Tells you everything. Cracking it, stats. Uh, yeah, right, Jace, but it, well but it is. Good it work. is. But, but, but look at the players we've got on the bench. We've got Tyler Roberts sat on the bench. You know, played for Leeds throughout the whole of the Premier League. Got uh, Harry Wilson on the bench. Brooks on the bench. Cabango. Um, Cabango's Cabango. on the bench. I know he's a centre half. They've got to be upset, those players. They've got to they? be massively upset. You're absolutely right. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> what about? How do we feel about? The way in which I just felt Wales capitulated second half as well. Yep. And Nico Williams, you know, bless him, he's not playing regularly for Liverpool. And that will come on to that in just a moment because that's a big problem for Wales in that step up, lads. And look at what we've seen with these matches in the last 16. They got frustrated with each other, didn't they? And they, they picked up a few cards and things like that. And it Absolutely. Wasn't, wasn't the Wales we were used to seeing, especially back in 2016. And whether that's because, you know, things aren't right with... Uh, some of the decisions the manager's making and the way that the, the teams that he's putting out or whatever, it wasn't that. You didn't get that togetherness that we had back in But also, lads, you played the game, right? And football is decided on moments, isn't it? Yep. And apparently, I've heard many, many pundits talk about, you know, it only takes a second to score a goal and it takes seconds for team spirit to dissipate, yeah. right? Joe Roden picks up that yellow card. Within a few minutes, we're 1-0 down. Yeah. Something happened. It was almost like as if he was moaning at the referee as well. And some, it was almost like a ripple of yeah. nervousness that suddenly, that, that well, combined uh, with the Danish uh, tinkering as well, yeah. suddenly you're 1-0 down. And, mm-hmm. uh, and obviously Gunter's come out after the game and and, and, and gave his opinion on the whole setup. Yeah. You, can, you know that that's not the first time he's probably had that conversation with him and other teammates. They've probably had a bit of a moan about that before. Well, in terms of the flight times and all that yeah, sort of stuff. and all that sort of but stuff. But the problem with that is, and it's all very well for the fans to talk about this and the players to come out and say, this we understand the frustration we do but everybody knew what the deal was yeah other teams are flying yeah. around switzerland are flying around as well yep they're still in the competition you have to sometimes address the problem and the problem was on the pitch tactically and personnel wise it just wasn't their day no, it wasn't no. so disappointed for wales uh they're out um at the last 16 stage uh and good luck to denmark you know i yeah. think everybody wants uh, to yeah. see them do yeah, well, did really well. Right. um can, sec- I, can i can i just say one more thing as well is the fact that um mark hughes has come out and said that um you know he thinks that robert page should be given the opportunity to move on with the world cup um as much as i love wales as much as i want him to see him get, uh, do well i don't think we're going to hit the we're going to get make the world cup if he stays as manager i really don't okay but there you go Yep. He's I, not going to get into any FAW press conference with, with I, comments like that, isn't he? Why are you Jess? asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to say, though, as well, I think Danny Ward's been a star. Uh, brilliant. I think Danny Ward's been absolutely terrific. And I think that Kiefer Moore, obviously, I would say that being a City fan, Ramsey's been class as well. Obviously, again, we know what happened with him against Denmark yeah. as well. But Danny Ward has been absolutely the star yeah, of the yeah. I can't believe, Jay, you're the first person to bring up a goalkeeper. I know. I feel uh, uh, I feel um, as if I let you down, And No, 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 Mr. Trinder hasn't mentioned off. goalkeepers yet, has well, he? Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, he's hung over from the wedding. Oh, yeah, yesterday. good point. Yeah, so right, bit, yeah, I'm yeah. sure the goalkeepers will crop up again in this conversation <laughs> over the next... <laughs> Uh, half an hour or so. But yes, I do agree with you. Danny Ward, I thought, was excellent for yeah. Wales. Uh, and it's disappointing not to see him play every week. And that's why I think I did I think mention... you'll get picked he, up. He'll get a move. Definitely. Oh, yes. He'll yeah. get a Brilliant. Move. Yeah, without doubt. And he will get a move. He, he, actually, when he's in goals, he looks quite small. But when he was stood next to Schmeichel at the end, shaking his hand... There was a lovely he's, moment, he's wasn't there, where Schmeichel and Ward came together at the end. That yeah. must have been brilliant for Leicester really City nice. fans. Yeah. Really nice. But Danny Ward, Kiefer Moore, Aaron Ramsey, I think they've had great tournaments. They have. So we, we go again with Wales uh, for the next, well, the World Cup qualifiers, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the next challenge for them. Uh, second game on that day, uh, we move move through these uh, um, as quick as we can. But Italy 2, Austria 1. Everybody, uh, somebody scored against Italy, eh? Uh, and Austria gave them a good game. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, I thought it was a terrific so, game. Was it Australia? Or Australia or did really yeah. well. They yeah. did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe, yeah. Joe Manga was man yeah. of the match, definitely. <laughs> and, and, they were, and they were lucky because I think they it was were, Arnautovic. It was. Um, scored that goal, which was slightly offside. If you, yeah. if you, if you look at that goal and you look at Denmark's fourth goal, it was nigh on virtually the same. So, it, they, Austria was so unlucky, I thought, because to me it looked onside. 
You know, and you, they always say you've got to give the benefit of the doubt to the striking team. And that goes in and that's 1-0. Italy are out. Yeah. And Arnautovic, we saw this, didn't we, in the Premier League as well. When he's on his day, Brilliant. he's practically unplayable. Unstoppable. And Italy could not get a hold of him in that first 45, could they? No, and it just goes to show that, you know, you, you take it to the Italians mm. and they don't like it up them. But I tell you the other thing as well, though, lads... <laughs> Uh, the other thing as well about uh, about Italy as well, and I said this about Belgium, I think, on last week's podcast, is they're so patient. There's something almost inevitable about yeah. it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They just keep plugging away, they keep hanging on in there. Like Belgium, they're, they're the most patient side I've seen. It's almost like they believe and yep. in their game plan and their personnel and their players. They believe in the ethos. Yeah. I think we mentioned last week as well as the fact that uh, you know, the Italian team, they're not household names, a part of a couple of them. Um, but they've just they're, obviously they're a unit now, aren't they? It doesn't look like there's too many prima donnas in there, and they just they just get on with it. Yeah, their keeper as well. For, uh, he's got a, for, <laughs> their keeper's made hell of a save. Yeah, he has. In, uh, uh, he's a great goalie, Donnarumma, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, a fantastic um, he's keeper. Made an unbelievable save, and of course uh, the manager's doing. My close friend of yours, the manager, Jace. Oh, Mancini. Yeah, is he? Oh, I don't know Mancini. Oh, for, uh, no, he's one of the ones I've met. Bloody hell, there's somebody doesn't know. <laughs> Yeah, I've, got, I've got him. Of course he has. He's got him. But no, I do know Roberto Martinez quite well. Uh, oh, so at right. the World Cup Clang. in 2018, yeah. in the World Cup in 2018, yeah. true story now, I was working pitch side. I think and he means Rene and Renato. Though. Belgium. Yeah, yeah. Belgium Rene had just beaten Brazil. <laughs> Belgium had just beaten Brazil in Kazan, in the lovely Russian city of wow. Kazan. And I was pitch side. And basically, you have to wait for the FIFA representatives to bring the managers to you. And because I worked with him, I saw him and it was big hugs. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, I said, well done, Roberto. Literally, he like, they just come off the pitch. Oh. Fantastic, fantastic. That's he goes, nice. interview now? I went, yeah, if you can. Excellent. And then the FIFA guy was like, don't ever do that when, again. When, when was this? 2018 World Cup, oh, Russia. This is when you used to go to big tournaments, was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like we it's like we we're, we're giving him therapy and yeah. not be sat in here. Do you know what I mean? He has to he has to talk it, get it off his chest, yeah. and I think I think this is doing you good. Yeah, it probably is. And also, the yeah. fact is, we're going we're hoping to go and do a podcast live from the semi finals. Yeah. so there we, we are. are. So I will be going to a major tournament. So there thanks to Ember yes. Blue, I am actually going there. Well, there we so go. Yeah, then. thank you, thank <laughs> well, you that, for that, that, thank you for rubbing it in, Jace. That I didn't get the gig. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, at least there'll be some Welsh uh, representation there at the semi finals. <laughs> hey, anyway. hey. there we go. Yeah, there we are. There we goes. But I enjoyed that Italy game. I thought it was a cracking game. It was a good game. game. So Italy go through two one after extra time. Holland Czech Republic was a bit disappointing. Netherlands, for me. I think you'll find no, Netherlands it's, it's is Holland. the correct term. Netherlands. No, it's Holland. Netherlands. Everyone's calling it Netherlands apart from you. No, yeah. I think you'll find a lot of people. Calling oh yeah, this was the game that you build on the last podcast as Holland against Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah. Because you're living right. in 1991. It's the Republic yeah. of Czechoslovakia. Right. Judging by your trainers, you are living in 1991. Yeah, exactly. It's all coming out now. It's all coming out now, yeah. Well, obviously, Listen, there's, there's, I'm not like you, Jason. I know you never get hot-headed because there's, well, there's nothing up there to keep the heat in for a start. <laughs> so, he's um, got a cap on. I'm just, I'm just, he has got a cap on today, yeah. Yeah, Holland, nil, Czech Republic, two. Again, a fantastic game. Great though. game. Really, really good. Sending off, was it, or not? I think it was, yeah. I yeah. think it was as well. I think you got the right decision. Oh, yeah. I think VR has been absolutely brilliant in this tournament. They have indeed. Fantastic. Yeah. Delit, you could, yeah. Because they were talking about, has he got control of the football? Would he have had control of the football had Delit not taken him out? Of course he would have. Of course he would have. They spent ages saying, oh, would he have control of the football? All he's got to do is two touches and he's in on goal. Yeah. So definite decision. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And it changed the game, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Gary Neville said after the game, you know, whilst Punditin, whatever you want to call it, he basically Punditin. said, yeah, yeah, he said a young player like uh, De Litt does that but an, um, an older more wily professional just lets him go through and, and potentially score or yeah. not ok so, interesting and, and I thought that that's was, an yeah, interesting that one yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah, but I thought they were brilliant Czech Republic after that then really energetic weren't they as well they were they were really good. Uh, and a uh, close friend of yours Jason uh, Roberto Martinez beating yes. uh, the holders Portugal dumping yeah. them out of the tournament yeah, Belgium great goal won, from T. Portugal Hazard nil yeah, great goal but again that could have easily gone to extra time couldn't it because Portugal battered them oh, in the last the 10 Portugal minutes Portugal at the post yeah. didn't they, they yeah. uh, the keepers cut, pulled off a couple of saves as well which is you know, it makes a massive difference. So, I was uh, thinking as well, right? Because I was actually watching this game thinking about Pepe, right? Pepe's the type of player, right? I- I'd have him in my side because you yeah. need a you need a Pepe in your side. Definitely. You know, when, you know when it's all kicking off, someone just go in and just go, "Come on, let's have it." There's not many players who gets a yellow card and start smiling. Yeah. <laughs> 
he, he was. He, he, did. he was started was smiling at when he had that yellow card. He was almost like scoring a goal, getting a yellow card for Pepe. But he's that sort of player, isn't he? You yeah, need yeah. every team needs a Pepe. I think. I, I thought he was getting yeah. sent off on that. Yeah, definitely absolutely. not from that that actual uh, yellow card. But I think uh, after that, I thought he was going to go mad. Do you know Portugal made more passes than Belgium? Did they? 596 passes compared to Belgium's 451. Bloody hell. Yeah. Statistic <laughs> of the week. <laughs> yeah. Have you got that pillow, Greg? <laughs> and, crucially, they have more possession, 58%. But the only stats of the count, boys, is Belgium 1, Correct. Portugal 0. That's Correct. right. And, and then we go on to uh, two cracking games, uh, Croatia, Spain and France, Switzerland. What this is where game. it all sort of started for me, for the Euros. Yep. These two games here yeah. were absolutely incredible. And you can, and we, we, we like a little bit of a flutter, don't we? And we do indeed, now and again, yep. like that. But having seen those two games, and obviously Spain being 3-1 up against Croatia and France being 3-1 up against Switzerland, for those games both to finish 3 all at extra time uh, sorry at the end of 90 minutes my god do you know what I, I mean know. It's, it was exhausting wasn't I, it it was exa- I, I actually felt sorry for Croatia because I last uh, podcast I actually picked Croatia to win this game yeah you did and when, when they went 3-1 down um, the, what, what disappointed me in the whole game was Morata every single time he got touched he went down holding his face holding but what a class player and you can't take that away from him but he, he just disappoints me from going down too easily and well, the, holding his outfield face outfield players do and it, you know you, really, you won't see goalkeepers <laughs> doing that but uh, outfield players for me uh, I'm just, just doing my nutting mm. yeah, they'll get brushed by a little finger on the face and go down as if somebody's uh, punched him in the eye like I, I, Jason I'm, had the other week well, from that <laughs> nine year old do you know what I mean I mean he spent ten minutes on the floor from a nine year old <laughs> Rolling around. It's a good punch, though, in fairness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about the Spanish goalkeeper then, Unai Simon. What yeah, happened well, to him? Well, I thought... Goalkeeper he, I th- union. Yes. Well, from I mean, Jason again, Shocking on goal. Uh, again, a little bit like um, your career, Jason. He took the eye off the ball. <laughs> so, um, uh, he had a bit of spin on it, you know. He wasn't, didn't know which way, to, again, didn't know which way direction to go. Uh, whether it's to do a podcast or not, <laughs> and he took his eye off the ball, and uh, yes, you know, it's it, spinning into his own goal. It's, it's, a, di- it's a difficult one, goal. though, because again, whilst you're playing, it doesn't matter what standard you played at. You're always told as a defender or a back pass to play it, not pl- to, sorry to play it away from the goal, mm. which didn't happen. But yeah. we're, talk- we're talking international football now, so it shouldn't happen. It happened. You just you know get, but what a what a save he brought he out in the Spain in that in, game. was it in the second half or was it in the extra time when? Um, well, I think it was that's three, a goal. It was that three all all, wasn't it? It was, was it? Uh, wow, it was three all. Uh, and he's pulled off that point. But mind you, 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 the Croatian player, but the, 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 the outfield player would never get slaughtered for missing that chance. He's four yards out. He should be burying it. Mm. But he's hit it sort of straight down the middle of the goal. And um, Unai stuck a, a strong hand out and saved it. So, yeah, you know, the God giveth and the Lord hath taken yeah, away. Yeah, true. Wow. And The uh, Reverend Trinder. And I saw David yes, De Gea my, as yes, well. My son. He, he had a little word with him at the end of the game as well, didn't he? As if to say, look, I've been through this. Because when I was at the World Cup in 2018, <laughs> I had a chat with David De Gea. No, serious though. Again, true story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had a chat with David De Gea because if you remember, he had that fumble against Ronaldo mm. when Ronaldo scored that hat-trick. 3-3, first game. Yep. I think Spain's first game in Sochi. And uh, he let one go under his guts. And also, <laughs> I'm not sure whether De Gea, that was the start. Because he had a couple of howlers after that. He did. And I remember saying to him, oh, you know, how are you feeling? And he's like, well, you know, look, football's a game of errors. And quite frankly, now and again, that's what goalkeepers do. Yeah. Isn't it, Jace? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know. You did a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where was the game? Oh, Where was the game, yeah. Swatchy? Swatchy. Uh, Swatchy. I, I, I was going to say, I got one of those watches. Swatchy. <laughs> Swatchy. <laughs> Pass those wine gums, Jase. Uh, <laughs> Do yeah, some talking, and yeah. while I have a wine gum. Uh, uh, yeah, and, Do you uh, the, well, the other talk thing is... about uh, France three, Switzerland mm. three. There you go, Jason. Wow, while he waffles. Thanks, mate. Go on, have you? Yeah, go on. Go on, yeah, go on, go on, um, go on yeah, Okay, yeah, no worries. I was just going to say that again, another quality game. Now, going into this game, who wouldn't back France? Mm. It's it's just crazy. And then, as you can see, the first half of France, they were poor. They were poor. With the quality of players and squad that they've got, that should never have happened. And I don't know what the problem was. You, you know, obviously being a, um, having a like nice little flutter now and again is the fact that you, 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 know, you put quite a bit of money on France to win that game. But then, you know, Switzerland, when they come out, they, again, were absolutely fantastic. And you, you can't take anything away from them. But again, France... Well, to come from 3-1 down and still... 
you know, we, we, we talked earlier on about Wales coming back and didn't even look like coming back from, you know, 2 0 down yeah. against Denmark. And you've got a team like Switzerland, who Wales have played against and drawn against yeah. in that tournament. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they still have that. Um, tenacity to go and belief. And, yeah. and belief to go back and get back exactly. into that game and I think they had a penalty as well which Larice saved so they yeah. could have won that yeah. in, no, yeah. in normal well time. that was the amazing thing and that's why football is the greatest sport on the planet uh, I so, think so you miss a penalty and then at the other end you concede and and then you can see it again. And you're thinking, oh, man, this is why we love football. I mean, what a night that was. But you know what, boys? Football's a simple game. You pass to your mate, you take your chances, and you win your tackles. But fundamentally, it's a game of fitness these days. And I thought Switzerland looked the fitter side. Mm. By the end of it, don't you think? They looked leggy, France, didn't they? Totally leggy. They looked ma- crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. They looked the fitter side by the, the end of the it. The problem with France as well is that when they wanted to turn it on, they did. You know, and just take Pogba's goal, for, for example. What a goal that is, you know. We don't oh, we see that from him player. now once every few years. That's it. Whereas well, you don't, you don't really see it very much for Man United. I think that's what people have, you know, have a bit of a, a grudge with Pogba. Yeah. Yeah, but how really... much of that is down to the shape and formation as well? Because the quality of he's, so, around him. he's so consistent when he plays for France in that position. Yeah. He just bosses that midfield. Jay... It's almost like the spine, isn't he, Andy? Yeah, it's the quality of the players around him in the French team. As I said, when they do turn it on, they, they look spectacular. But uh, at Man United at the moment, they just haven't got the quality of players around exactly. him. Exactly. How many he's, times have you seen Pogba playing at United? And almost like he's trying so hard. Too hard. He's in, you know, he goes into corners. He goes down these yep. kind of alleys, you know. And you think to yourself, if he stayed in that one position, like he plays for France, he is so influential. Yep. And some of his passing the other night was amazing. I'm quite sad, I have to say. Well done to Switzerland. I'm quite sad that we've lost the World Champions. Uh, me. Well, I have to say. So, yeah, Portugal out. European champions, yep. France World Cup champions out, yeah. Holland out, Netherlands, yeah, out, 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 out. Uh, yeah. Next game, England two, Germany nil. Well, lads, um, I mean, lads, I was at, I was trying to watch this at a wedding in Devon that didn't even have a one G signal. Yeah. Um, so uh, I did catch up when I got back today uh, on the highlights. Thank you, and I Alan think, Hansen. And I think probably the highlights package would have been the best way to watch that game. Um, it was the first half was just dire but with uh, you know he's obviously Eric um, Dyer Eric Dyer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't start me on him whatever you do I will be here for the next two hours obviously he's not started with uh, Foden and Grealish again but uh, Grealish has come on and I think yet yeah, again changed the the, the, the game uh, set it's up the goal well, let's, uh, let's, Sterling's let's, got another one and, uh, and Kane uh, like I did say in the last podcast will not go uh, four games without scoring a goal. And no, up you pops. did say that, you well, did say that, but I've got him down as golden boot winner. Yeah. Who have you got, Jace? Uh, Insignia. Insignia. No, Immobile. Immobile. Yeah. And who have you got, by the way? Mbappe. And who's yeah. to win it? Um, France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you went. Did you go for France and Mbappe? I France and Mbappe. I, I listened to the podcast the other day and I think that's what it's like. He goes, France and Mbappe. Yeah. So confident. So right confident. cocky. Exactly. And, and he was going to miss the penalty at the end. Yeah. <laughs> go on, Jace, carry on. You were talking about Grealish. Uh, yeah, well, it came on and uh, obviously I uh, changed the game for, for England. Um, Sterling getting another goal uh, and Kane breaking his um, run of, of not scoring. Uh, England to Germany nil. I think. I think they were obviously deserved winners at the end of that. Muller's had a fantastic chance to bring it oh, back to one. How's he missed that? But uh, and also Pickford, um, the save from Timo Werner and Havertz, vital saves. Well, let, let, let's let's start from the first half. You know, let's analyse that. Well, that's done then. Um, <laughs> second second half, yeah, obviously. It, but England is just so boring. You know, I can understand that they've won. I get that. Great, fantastic. But it's just boring. First half, boring. Sterling pops up with a goal again. Fantastic. And then Sterling gives the ball away for Muller to go through. And how Muller doesn't score that goal, I don't know. Did you see that camera shot that caught Sterling? And he was basically holding his head. He's like holding his head when Muller's running through. Did you see it goes wide and he like touches the ground? Did you see Pickford though when he went through and, and he went absolutely berserk? Yeah, he with went him. mad, didn't he? With yeah, Sterling, yeah. you can see it. And that's probably why he was down on the floor holding his ears because he was getting a right pace in from lads, Pickford. How has Muller missed that? He's got to score oh, that. Oh, he's got to score that at that level. Young, young, young new kid coming, you know, coming through for Germany, going through like that and misses. Take fine, you know, that, that's that's okay. Still shouldn't have missed. But Muller, how many World Cups and uh, Euros has he been in? God knows. But none of the German squad, no player in that German squad has ever scored in a European Championship. 
So, does it, is it a stat for you, Chase? Oh, I, come, I, I tell you what, I got a really good stat. I dug out as well, though, lads, right? Um, about the players who've won the Champions League or European Cup and the Euro double in the same season. Only nine players have ever won a European Cup and European Championship in the same year. That's a good question, actually, for our listeners. Yeah, here. it is. Nine. Nine. Only nine players. You'll never get any of them. No, you won't get any no. of them. Any Do you want to try? Any of them goalkeepers. Do you want to try any of them? No, um, no. I think if you think about it, 2012 and 2016, you'd get them. What was the question again? Yeah, what was the question? Nine players <laughs> yeah. have won the European Championship and the European Cup Stroke Champions League in the same season. So think of this, because the piece I was reading was about Rhys James, Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell. Right. So they won the Champions League for Chelsea, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, if they win it with England, they join an elite band of players who've won it for club and country. Do you get it? Well, yeah. Only well, nine players. Well, Chilwell haven't played yet. No, I know, but but he'd still get a medal, wouldn't he? Ah, right, just yeah. okay, yeah. So only nine players have done it. Can you think of any? No, that's a, yeah. Well, I, I, can you give us a bit of a good one, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's a really good, that's a yeah, really good. good one. Right, I, we'll get I, back I, I think, to you. I think stick that out on Twitter, actually. Yeah, okay. Well, it's easy to find, though. Yeah. You'd have to Google it. All ah, right, okay, fine. Okay, I'll tell you at the end of the show. All right. That's what we'll do. That's we'll keep a, you guessing. That's a good show. Tell you at the end of the show. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Stay tuned, listener. Yeah. Oh, Jace, don't you worry. I know how to keep people listening to shows. What, by, li- by leaving your uh, your goal on the Cardiff City Stadium right to the end, like you did this morning? <laughs> My WhatsApp went off going, oh, here yeah, he is, he yeah. said it again, there it is. Let's get John on the show, shall yeah. we? Boys, going back to England, though, this is why I think, and I did say, first podcast, I think England, semi-finals at least, all season I've been thinking that they're going to have a right good run at this because the Wembley effect and also, I think Southgate's a great manager, by the way, and also, look at the squad they've got, lads. Look at the squad. That's got to be one of the best squads in world football. The going back that... to your going back to your point, do you think Gareth Southgate is is a really good manager? I think he's a good manager. I do think you? the way he's I don't okay. you think no. the way he's handled he got them to a World Cup semi final. That's no mean feat. Mm-hmm. And they lost to a very good Croatia side. Mm, yeah, okay. Um, he's, anyway, but but, he's, but he's going to be tested in the next couple of weeks. He is, he is going to be tested he's massively. Got to start Grealish. But at the moment, Andy, you've got to say. You've got to keep the faith with him if you're an England fan because yep. he's doing the job, good man. Good point, good point. He's he doing is. the job. He and look indeed. at the players. You're, right. you're absolutely right. Look at the players he could have brought on yesterday. Bellingham, Foden, Mount, Sancho, Rashford. Yep. Uh, come on, guys. These are players who would get into most international if starting break 11s. break it down that way, that's one hell of a squad, isn't it? One heck of a squad. Where, and how I saw this was against Scotland, Rashford walked past Kane. Yeah. As they were walking out the tunnel, I was thinking, oh, wow, look at that. That's Marcus Rashford. Can't get in this side. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. And I thought Kane took his goal really well. Got yeah, a great he header. Did. He did. Great header. You've got to get yourself into those positions. Yeah. And he did, didn't he? Yeah. You know, and Greenish really feeds him that ball. Talking about mean feet, Jace. Yeah. You've seen this, you've seen this animal next to me. He's just sat here with no shoes on. Oh, why would you do that? That's mean yeah. feet. It's like sitting next to a Sasquatch. <laughs> let's find out. Let's find out from Greg, who's voicing in here tomorrow. Who's in here tomorrow, Greg? Is going to put up with. No one's in tomorrow. No one's in the next three yeah. days. I, it's I, being fumigated. I'd do it three weeks if I was you, Greg. <laughs> um, right, <laughs> Sweden. Sweden. Oh. Yeah. right, Sweden won. We've done England, uh, obviously, through against Germany. Sweden won. Ukraine, after extra time again, yep. two. I, I fancied the, the Swedish at one. You know, I thought they would, they were going to win that. Red I card? We, Let's think, do with the red card. Red card? Definitely. Definitely red card? Yeah. No, I don't yeah. think Reckless. so. Reckless. Reckless, man. You don't think so? No, what? I don't think so. I've watched it quite a few times. Oh. And he gets the ball. Big shout this year. But every, everything in super slow motion looks 100 times worse. He gets the ball clearly before the player. Doesn't matter. Right. But the player runs into him. So what's that? what's that guy supposed to do? He's, 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 he's got to challenge for that yeah, ball but and he the, wins I that think, ball. I think I get your point, Jace, and you are sounding like someone who played in the 90s. <laughs> and no, serious, no, this is a um, serious point now, right? Because I think the game has changed so much since when you were playing, lads, and when mm-hmm. I started watching football. Yeah. Back in the day, I think everyone dusts themselves down and gets on with it. But by the letter of the law, it's a reckless yeah, but tackle. we can't go back. The letter of the law would have meant that about five other players in this tournament... Uh, would have got sent off for exact same challenge that Ampadu got sent off for. And that's Lukaku stayed on, law. didn't he? Lukaku stayed on yeah. the pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so no, I get that. It's the letter of the law thing. I don't, I, it's interpretation from from the referee at the time, well, obviously uh, whoever's controlling the VAR. I just thought it was a bit. I, when you see them in super slow mo, it looks hundred times worse. And yeah, you know, I can. It doesn't matter how fast the uh, the video is going. If if it's a bad challenge, it's a bad challenge. I don't think it's a bad challenge though. He wins no, the it ball. Is. He's, he's up below his knee. 
Yeah, but you look at where, when he's when he's cleared the ball first, and the momentum of his leg has meant that obviously the Ukrainian player that's running in um, has caught him on the knee. Yeah, uh, right. but, but you, well. So if we got super slow motion on the punch from the nine-year-old on Jamo, then uh, would that look a lot worse? <laughs> oh yeah, he'd have been going damn, yeah. going damn. No, my defence needs a lot of work. Yeah. A bit like you, and yeah, when you were playing, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. But so, what a great tournament it's been, though, lads. I mean, what a week it's been. It's just Absolutely. been a joy to be a football fan, isn't it? I think JT just said uh, hit the nail on the head there with just saying that uh, the Euros now have just woken up, yeah. Yeah. haven't they? With th- th- those string of games taking the Wales game out, every single game was entertaining, end to end, goals galore, and that's exactly what we want from a tournament. Yeah, and so we are at the quarterfinal stage. Yep. Um, Believe it or this, not. That comes around quick. It's this Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this Friday, Friday the, the Belgium, first... Belgium, Italy. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Switzerland. Is it Switzerland, Switzerland Spain? Spain. Yeah, Switzerland, Switzerland, Spain. Spain's at five o'clock. That's the first game. Oh. And then we've got the evening game as well then. Brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, on Friday and then on Saturday, uh, the Republic of Czechoslovakia uh, versus Denmark. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> the Republic of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Ukraine versus um, the United Kingdom. Predictions? Uh, predictions. Um, so let's let, let's start with uh, Jason. Okay, uh, which game are we starting with first? We'll go with uh, from one to four. So from we'll go Switzerland, Switzerland Spain. Spain. Okay. Well, Spain have lost just one of their twenty-two meetings with Switzerland in all competitions, winning sixteen and drawing five. With that defeat coming in the twenty ten World Cup. Do you want to, do you want to wine, come Africa? Yeah, yeah. Go on, then, yeah. There you go. Thanks. Do want, well, at least yeah. someone's done that. Work. Uh, I don't want an orange. You two yeah. clowns do, do nothing. Want... You just sit here and pretend you do know you the to... game. I don't like orange wine. Them. <laughs> Anyway, right, I fancy Spain in this. I just think that the class will tell and at some point it's going to click, isn't it? I worry about them defensively. I thought they leaked those goals against Croatia and clearly it looked like at one stage they were going out of the tournament. But I just think that Spain have got so many technically gifted players. I think that Switzerland can run all day long, but I think Spain will win. I agree. So you're going for Spain as well? you I'm going for Spain. 3-1 Spain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, OK, um, just for the hell of it, I'll go for Switzerland. OK, just for the hell of it, yeah? Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is Switzerland's fourth quarterfinal appearance at a major tournament in World Cups and Euros, and their first in a European Championship. Right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's move it swiftly on to uh, yeah. Belgium versus Italy. This is a toughie. Yeah. This is. This is the fifth meeting between Belgium and Italy at a major <laughs> tournament. All four previous meetings came in the group stages. The thing is, you're laughing at me and bleeping this stuff out. If the TV presenters on the television screens read this stuff out, you go, oh, he knows this stuff. No, I don't. <laughs> no, we don't. We just go, we should stop, stop spouting those stupid stats. Uh, I tell you what, boys, you know I'm what? sticking when with Italy. First, when we first started this, a bit of blue podcast, we go, don't, don't it annoy you all those just people that drivel on about stats? stats yeah. So what did we say? then for Belgium versus Italy Jason Mohamed I'm going to say Italy because I have st- and I don't want to say this because you know as I say I know Roberto Martinez very very well and I hope that he uh, yeah, gets yeah. to a so semi-final going to be very happy. you're going to be banned from Belgium but- for <laughs> conferences as well now <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, if you're listening out there, Jason doesn't think Sorry, he can... Uh, just for the record, it's not yeah. just press conferences, I yeah. think you're fine. <laughs> and Italy, I think Italy, because I've said Italy are going to win it as well, I just think they're on You've got to go for Italy, haven't you? And I was looking at the front page of the Gazzetta della Sport this morning in preparation for this podcast, <laughs> and the headline was three arrows, and you know Chiesa, what a player he is. Good player. Chiesa, and there was a picture of them training, and I think the headline was three arrows, and I just get the feeling that Italy as a nation sensed that something special is about to happen because they've got so many amazing players going forward they have indeed I, I, I'm going for penalties and Belgium Ooh, are to you? win yeah I reckon it'll go all the penalties way penalties and Belgium to win yeah I reckon <sighs> it'll go all the way I'm with you Roberto don't worry if your yeah. mate's not <laughs> <laughs> what about where, you Jace? where'd you get the Gazetta de, de Sport from online, oh, online. online there's, there's this thing called the internet Jace you want to try it mm. oh right okay I know, well, I knew you didn't go out to shops. You never buy anything. So, um, <laughs> what are um, shops, says Jason and Andy? Said I'm, at the I'm start. going for Italy because I've said all along. I think Italy. Oh, they were my pick to win. Uh, Italy. And score. What's the score? What I'll tell you, you what, though, boys. I tell you what. If Hazard and De Bruyne are not fit, because they're not guaranteed is, to be fit either, fit. they're both struggling, aren't they? Well, Hazard's been struggling for years now, only since he went to Real Madrid. Yeah. But they've he's both not, got injuries, haven't they? You know, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Oh, I tell you what, it's a that tough was a one. Weird one. Another good stat for you, Jay. Here's one, and, and, and you know, I haven't spent about 
well, at least half the day, like you do, looking up stats. Mm. Um, it's called th- being professional. There's no, yeah. no Real Madrid players in the Spanish squad for the first time. That's a good stat, Jay. Good and there's, stat. There's, there's more players in the Spanish squad that have played for Rochdale than they have for Real Madrid. Where's he got that from? I mean, that's brilliant. You've trumped me. Listen, I've trumped him. I've done him. You've done it? Yeah. And do you know who the Rochdale play? It's the keeper. Who's the Spanish uh, reserve keeper? Have a look at that, Jay. Yeah. No, no, no. There's it's, it's another one. Is there? Robert, Roberts, I think. Roberto. Something. Okay. Stay with me, caller. Mm. Keep talking. I'll anyway, find he, he, played, uh, he played for Rochdale. So, hence the stats. There's more Rochdale players in the, or ex Rochdale players in the Spanish squad than there are Where's current he that Real that Madrid. Is a, that is a really, really good players. stat. There's no Real Madrid players in the Spanish squad for the first time, I think, ever. Anyway. I've never been to the Costa del Rochdale. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's good. You should go there. Yeah, lovely. Calabasso Rochdale. All right. Next game was the Republic of Czechoslovakia versus oh, uh, my Denmark. What he's making up countries. Yeah, I was going to bring in a map for him today. Yeah, well, I put one on um, on a WhatsApp group the other day, didn't I? The uh, the Ladybirds um, Kids uh, Atlas. <laughs> Is that when you got your spelling wrong again? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for Denmark. Yeah, I'm going to go. I think draw. I think it'll be. Extra time and pens because five of the last six matches between Czechoslovakia and Denmark have ended in draws. Five of the last six boys wow. have ended in draws. So I'm going to go That's a good after extra time. I think it'll be cagey, possibly 1-1, and I've got the Danes to win on pens. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. And I think as well, a lot of people will be saying, come on, Denmark, because obviously Christian Eriksen. Yeah. Absolutely. Who did JT? you go for, Andrew? I went for Denmark, 2-0. Okay, yeah, I've, I've gone for Denmark. On pens? Yeah, no, oh, straight. in the 90 yeah. or in the 120? Well, well I don't know. In, okay. in, the, in the 90, I reckon. Okay. Oh, okay. Denmark. And then this is the big one, Jace. Uh, UK versus UK. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good one. You get uh, in so much trouble by saying UK. Yeah, I know, yeah. Mm. Uh, like, the, like Holland. Who are you supporting, Jace, by the way? Because all, all this tournament you've been saying, yeah, well, we, we, Wales, we, we. And then you turn up today in your England shirt. Hmm. And you seem well, to have changed. He turned French. Well, as, as, you, as you know, or maybe some of the, uh, maybe, maybe the, listener, some of the listeners don't know. Look, maybe the listener doesn't know uh, that obviously I have Welsh background as well. My yeah. mother's side of the family is Welsh. Yeah. Uh, and I've got relatives uh, in Wales. I won't give you their addresses because you'll go out and stalk them, Jace. But, um, <laughs> and uh, and get some stats on them. They went to Waitrose, 63 of the time. Five out of six Jasons, <laughs> aunties and uncles were born in Worcester <laughs> did you know <laughs> so just this for is the... the eighth time Jason's auntie has been down the shops yeah. today <laughs> so just for their own safety, <laughs> uh, their own safety. they will yeah. remain yeah. anonymous yeah exactly um, <laughs> we'll see Jason Mohammed on Crime Stoppers uh. so obviously I'm bit, uh, <laughs> so uh, but, it, but clearly yes I, I you know I was born this in... is Jason's cousin Robert's fourth oh, yeah. European championship <laughs> <laughs> he had Cheerios this morning <laughs> Um, how do you, how do you take full those, fat milk? How do you start to restrain in order, Greg? Oh, I do you don't know? know. No. Mm. Oh, very so, good. Uh, so very it's good. when we start calling Jason Mohammed, who are you in the bushes? I'm going to go. I'm going to go for England, obviously. Okay. Yeah, you have to, don't you? Yeah, I'm yeah. I've got to go for England as well. I'm, and I'm, I'm, it's not even painful saying that because, again, I do want to see him progress. You know, when the way they're doing things at the moment, they're doing it the right way. Um, again, I'll, I'll just reiterate the fact that I don't, I'm not a great fan of Gareth Sokey, but they're winning. What can he do? You know, you can't, you can't, you can't do anything about it. Jason? I'm going to England. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to England. Uh, they've only lost one of their seven meetings with the Ukraine in all competitions, going down 1-0 in October 2009 in a World Cup qualifier. Oh, OK. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna put my neck out on this one as well and just say this. I think this might go to penalties. Oh really? Yeah. Do you think Ukraine might have a game I plan? I do. I, I think they're just gonna shut up shop. I do, and I think that it'll probably be one of their tactics to actually. Is Andrei Shevchenko though that much of a tactical mastermind to get the better of Southgate? Ooh, Has he got the players to do that sort got, of thing? I tell you, who's the, you know, who's the Man City player that scored? Zinchenko. 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 Good players in Great. I thought he had a good game last and night. And who's the lad that indeed. passed him that ball to, for him to score? The other Zinchenko, Zinchenko, whatever his name. They're all Chenko. Sergio Chichi. <laughs> Sergio, Sergio, Sergio Cicini Cicini. passed him the ball. Anyway, the uh, the assists with the outside of the foot. I forgot the guy's name. Chenko, I think. Um, amazing, and he's a good player as well. 
Yeah. Uh, the same with the um, the Swedish lad who I think is brilliant, Forsberg. He was superb. He was good, yeah, yeah. Yarmolenko had a good game as well, didn't he? Yeah. Well, we've seen Yarmolenko, how good he is when he plays for West Ham as well, mm. don't we? So, yes, so we've done those. So, we've done all those. Yeah. We've done those quarter finals, which kick off on Friday. And hopefully, when we get to the semi final stage, we'll be in and around the semi final. Well, we're hoping to do something from the semi final, aren't we? Yeah, from Wembley Way. Yes. Are we going to Wembley? Yeah, we're going to Wembley. Brilliant. We're going to Wembley. We're the greater bit of blue and we're off to Wembley. Wembley! Wembley! Yeah. Wembley. Don't, don't sing, Jason. OK. Right, competition time. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah. Do we well, just we sit back now and eat wine gums while you yeah. do this? Oh, Any yeah. more wine gums left? Do you want a wine gum? Can I have one left? I'll ask one. Thanks, babe. There's some jelly babies somewhere. Go on, end. Do you want a wine gum? Uh, I'm all right, Greg, then. do you want some wine gums? He's an athlete. Thanks for, yeah. So it's competition time. Uh, Should I last, stop, stop rattling this stop shit? rattling. What's that rattling? <laughs> um, last week we had our second pair of the Sock Council socks sent out to our winner, Hugh Moores. Well done, Hugh. Uh, from Cardiff for his uh, Euro tournament story involving a Brazilian. Um, and he took a nice picture of his <laughs> Of a Brazilian? <laughs> <laughs> Sadly not. No. Um, <laughs> He uh, he took a picture of him uh, chilling out in his garden with his uh, Brazilian <laughs> with his socks. I'll, I'll send you a picture of Brazilian <laughs> later on. Uh, right, so this which is which like nineteen ninety six loaded so which magazine, gonna, isn't it? Which bits are we going to be allowed to keep in, Jace? <laughs> None of that, probably. Why? No, oh, yeah, we'll be all right. Um, <laughs> so this week, not offending a Brazilian. We, this week we asked you for your correct scores for the Wales-Denmark game and incredibly Mm -hmm. we had a winner. No way. We did. Uh, Now this guy has been a friend and supporter of the show uh, since day one. So it couldn't have really gone to a more fitting person. Yeah, I don't exactly. Think. Um, Can I just um, say something as well? Is when he actually tweeted it, he said that Denmark would win four nil. I actually said if that happened, I'd eat Jason Trinder. Yeah. <laughs> and it happened. Yeah. I did see that. I know. Yeah. And didn't you say last so, night on listen, Twitter? I better start eating him now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. You touch That's me. His arm, then. You touch me, and you'll be hearing from my solicitors. So uh, just stay away from me, um, as always, please. Um, because you don't need to get any any bigger than you already are, Andrew. Um, he was that big as a baby. He was pushed around in a transit pram. Did you know that? So where was I? Yes. So the man who guessed correctly that Denmark would inflict a 4-0 drubbing over Wales, it's Johnny Cooper. Well then, John. Hey, what a Johnny Cooper. So, Johnny well, Cooper. Cooper. Go on, John. Um, well, you have to give us your address. Well, Jason knows it, obviously. Yeah, I can he tell knows you. where you live, Jason yeah. Mohammed. Uh, the fox. Um, <laughs> so this week, don't forget, we still got uh, a competition running for your best Euro goal ever. We've we've had some good um, entries for that. So many good suggestions, which we'll look through and pick a winner. Uh, so get your suggestions in on the socials, and you could win that fantastic prize of those highly acclaimed books uh, from Stuart Kane, the Man Friday book. So we'll give we'll be giving a set away to three. Winners. Yeah, and Stuart's a big fan of the show as well, isn't he? Stuart's a big fan of the show. So so, so send us your uh, favourite Euro goal to be in with a chance uh, on the socials. Either Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Can't keep up with them all. It's going absolutely mental. You must follow us as well. Um, Do you know what? When I was at this wedding that I've just been to over the last two two days, um, four different people came up to me and said... I love that podcast you're doing. No way. Just, just out, really? out of the blue. A bit of blue, out of the blue. That is so nice. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we've got four more listeners. <laughs> four, Brilliant. We've got four, four so you've got us to thanks for elevating your career. Mm. Uh, Jason Yeah, but they, did, they didn't mention you, Jason. Did they? They, they, just, did they, they just oh. congratulated me for the good that's work okay, I was fine. doing. That's fine. Well, you are the presenter. So, yeah, so um, that's a bit... Has uh, anybody got anything else to talk about this week? Are we looking forward to the quarterfinals? Uh, the semifinals, obviously. Should that happen? Should all these things happen? Let's have a look through this. So, if... Switzerland, uh, Spain we're going for, aren't we? So Spain are going through. They will play uh, Italy. Belgium. Spain, Italy in the Oof. semi-final. Belgium for me. Well, well Belgium for Andy. Mm. Um, and it will be England versus Denmark, Denmark. in the other wow. semi-final. Wow, 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 wow. So having looked at it like that, it could very well be 
uh, Italy England final. That's what I'm going for. Yeah, I think I think you're right there. But obviously Andy's different because obviously he thinks yeah, the Belgium dead will right win. There, yeah. he's <laughs> very, very, very different. <laughs> very, uh, very. But no, I, look, there's every chance that Belgium can beat Italy, isn't there? It's going to be a top class game, and hopefully it's going to be as exciting as some of the others as well that we've seen this week. But, Definitely. But look. You have to say the impetus is with on the two sides of the draw, the two sides that look as if they're going to meet in the final are Italy and England, aren't they? Yeah, yep. you know the force that is was very the much side with them. That I picked out to win the tournament, Italy, and you picked out. To yeah, win we the did. Yeah, England. yeah. And, and what was the other guy saying? Yeah, I don't know the other guy. What, what was he saying? What was he saying? What did you France say, and Bappe. France yeah, and Bappe. Exactly. If you listen I, back to previous podcasts, he's yeah. so confident and so yeah. cocky when he says France and Bappe. I know. I thought really thought that was going to happen, and then uh, it didn't. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, obviously in past Euros as well, there's been a final. I've just got this sneaky suspicion that okay, if Italy do beat Belgium, I just I've got this sneaky suspicion, and we can uh, dare, we can um, mark this down here. I think that uh, it could be like an Italy Denmark final or something like that. Italy England final, brilliant. It's going to that what an yeah. event that'll be, absolutely superb. And again, hopefully we'll be there to see that as well. But. Um, you know, I just got again. I just got a sneaky f- suspicion that uh, it could be Italy. Yeah, well, your, your track record's not been very good so far. Absolutely, Andrew, so Mbappe, uh, Franz Mbappe, <laughs> Mbappe. So uh, anyway, when we do go up to uh, Wembley and watch these games, we got to think about food as well, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. What food. sort of food? Well, you know, everyone's food. talking about everyone's talking about like gemet- genetically modified ge- food. Ge- ge- and I, I've got no issues. Jamaicai. Ge- well, I know exactly. I had, a, I had a cracking leg of salmon yesterday. <laughs> Why'd you laugh at him? So I don't yeah. know. He just makes me laugh, doesn't he? I mean, I look at his face on the Zoom and it just makes me laugh. But you see, the thing is, somewhere out there, there's trees working f***ing hard to produce oxygen so that you can breathe, Andrew. So I reckon you should go and apologise to him. I will. I like Sorry, a bit of a tree my, hugger. About my, about my language there, but I'm sorry. The great Stuart will bleep that one out. <laughs> Go on, Stu. So that's about all we've got time for on episode four. We've got our sponsors who we're extremely thankful to uh, to mention again. So iStadia, Hawks Bespoke Clothing. Go down there, Cardiff, Morgan, Morgan Arcade. Get yourself some clubber. Um, also, Zenith, Kestrel Construction, QTS and Giovanni. Thank you very much. For those guys. Well, thanks, guys. And not forgetting also our charity. Please go to the part on the website that says charity um, and click on the Motivation and Learning Trust. Thanks to everybody that's done that and donated whatever you can to them. Uh, all the details on the website. Thanks for all your lovely messages. Can't wait to see you again last uh, next week. Thanks to Greg, um, our sound engineer, has been trying to Fantastic. get his out. Uh, quickly so we can go home or at least <laughs> have a bit of a rest um, and thanks to Stuart our music producer and editor uh, thanks Jason thanks Andy thank, thank you, you. Uh, thank you Jason we'll be back next week with the semi final go on Jelly babies all over the place. Oh, what's this? Ah, oh, the winners of the Champions League and also European Championship. 1964. Luis Suarez, not the biting one. Internationale Milano and Spain. 1988. Hans van Brukelen, Ronald Koeman, Barry van Aal, Gerald Vandenberg, PSV Eindhoven and Netherlands. 2012, Fernando Torres, Juan Mata, Chelsea and Spain. 2016, Cristiano Ronaldo and Pepe, Real Madrid and Portugal. Cheers.